Okay. Uh, welcome to Teachers on Teaching. This is a series that we try to do two or three times per semester. So this is the final Teachers on Teaching talk for the spring term. My name is Jeremiah Perryhill. I, um, I work in the Instructional Design Department here in Teaching and Learning Services. So what Heijin is going to tell us about today actually grew out of a play. It grew out of a Provost Learning Innovation Grant um, to look at ways to transfer some of the knowledge mm -hmm. that people in um, new media design and the design field know about visual communication principles and translate that knowledge um, to people outside that discipline. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me, as you know, scanning the environment for teachers on teaching talks where teachers share what they know with other teachers, um, I thought that would be a particularly um, interesting set of knowledge to bring to bear on the work of teaching. So I'm incredibly grateful that Hagen took some time out today to share this with all of you. Um, Hagen Ney is an assistant professor in the College of Art and Design who uh, teaches many courses in new media design. And today, she's going to share visual communication design for uh, principles that impact learning. Thank you, Hagen. Hello. Thank you for coming. I'm super excited about this lecture. And so my first half of lecture, I'm going to briefly go over the five design principles. Obviously, there are more. And if you go bottom over there, there's also design elements to talk about. But for the, you know, I want you to get, you know, after my lecture, I want you to get going. So I'm just going to briefly like condense to five things that will directly impact your visual output with the typography. The reason is that 90% of communication is done through text. And it's very important that you walk them, your readers, through what is important, what is less important. That's also you know, good start. And using also imagery. So I'm going to share with you how to deal with, how to use a type and image together to communicate your message. And start with, you guess how to pronounce my name, right? So this is one way to communicate my name, visually, right? I always say to my students that my name is Hejin Ne, and then they go, uh, and then say horse hay and drink gin. So one of my students actually gave me this as gift, horse hay drink gin. So you never forget my name now, right? <laughs> That's how you also impact your readers and audience that you make them relate to something they already know. So. What do we do every day? You communicate verbally. Doesn't matter what your job is. Especially teacher, we talk every day. And somebody also mentioned that our audience, which is you know, who are students, they are very used to high impact visuals, right? And they come to a lecture. Uh, does tax come on, right? <laughs> so we are here of you know that how you can actually communicate efficiently using text and image through presentation or your handout. I mean, based on the survey that you guys, most of you know, your daily basis, visual output task is presentation and then the handout. So I'm going to actually show you today half of the demo will be using the PowerPoint to create a more efficient way to communicate your lecture. Or, and also one of the flyer that uh, one of your, you know, uh, shared with me. So I redesigned that in Word document. So I am not bringing you like fancy tool here. I'm just going to use the tools that you already know and just work from there. And when you look at here, we have like four different websites. Obviously, this is a very complicated problem. We not typically deal with day to day. -to -day. However, these four designs trying to say something to you. They're trying to communicate. They're trying to sell to you something. They're trying to persuade you something. But some design successful, some not. What makes that? So before I talk about what makes successful design, let's talk about what not, what is bad, right? So if I have a like, long time, I'm going to actually quiz you, and then kind of we back and forth, have a conversation. I'm just going to cut, cut to the chase, because I want to show you how to do something in the tool. So what makes a bad design? Cluttered, unfocused. So if I just put it to two things, how we make then less cluttered and focus. So I'm going to do reverse that topic. How you make things uncluttered? That means how to make less clutter. How to make un, you know, things that are unfocused, how to make focused. Here is the answer. How to get there? 
design principles. Again, that I said, I'm only talking about five, right? There are more, and you know, but I think that this is kind of the very important like foundation. Um, so alignment, contrast, proximity, repetition, visual hierarchy with typography. If we talk, you know, start talking about typography, that takes all day. So I'm just gonna just insert into the principle so that you can actually get the, some glimpse at the you know principles, you know, uh, related to the typography. So thing is that when you go through this principle, thing is that you already know, and you already aware of that because these principles are already wired in your brain. We are naturally from the Gessel principle psychology. Uh, we already know things are aligned. Yeah, then they make group. Things are apart, then you see the grouping already, right? Let's start with alignment. So you can already see that. Things are like, uh, what's related? What are you talking about? What are you showing me? Versus this is simple alignment principle. Things are needs to be grouped together, visually connected by alignment. In this case, I use the left alignment. Thing is that, you know, we already know, but when we actually put together slide or handout, do we really try to align things? Also, thing is that, oh, my tool doesn't allow me to quickly align things, right? But today I'm gonna show you, it's a one click away that you select multiple objects, click, it aligns. So that you don't really, you really need to spend time on align things. Whether you rather focus on, okay, what information should be aligned together so that they group together, right? So, example. So these are the flyer that I got. So it's a very important message, right? We need to properly recycle, not recycle, sorry, dispose a pill. However, when you look at, we typically do center align everything. Because it seems like it works easy to do. However, what happened when you align things in the center, you don't notice that is this create a visual clutter. What you don't see is that white space is very, very important. White space is almost like you're breathing air. So when you try, think about this, you say something, you pause between the sentence between the paragraph. You cannot just continuously say then people will not listen to you. People will get lost. So same thing, you need to consider white space when you put together things on your page. So it's the same as like you're speaking. So I'm pausing right now so that you're like, okay, I'm gonna say different things now, right? So example here. So I ask my student, give you like one week or so. This is like very basic like exercise. Give them content and then can you communicate it effectively using only type black and white. We don't need more than that. We need to start from that. So using the various typeface and size and weight, that's probably all you need to do when you create a visual output for starters, right? This one I created for PhD 180. So this is the poster and then this is website banner. As you can see here, I align things on the left side. I align things on the right side. This is also along with the proximity. The thing is that when you look at these principles, it's not like I'm gonna only use one here. It's all moving together. It's all kind of that comes together when you actually create a visual output. But here, it is actually a combination of everything, but I'm just gonna point it out what's actually strongly applied here. So you can see naturally alignment, alignment. And when you look at, this is alignment, alignment. And then you can see here, alignment. So it feels like clean, uncluttered. I'm not lost, I can just follow the line here. And typically, English speaker, they read top to bottom, top to bottom and left to right. So left aligned text naturally support the reading order. So just take advantage of it instead of doing center aligned. When you make things center aligned, what happens is that you go every line, but these lines start in different place. So your eyes go here and then go down. Okay, 
I'm in starting the different place, especially right here. So it feels like abrupting my reading flow, right? So think about that, okay? And when you look at the designs online or very look nicely done, what you don't see is that what's under. It's called grid system. They don't show you. This is not a secret. We put the line underneath it so that we can follow the line instead of you are trying to guess at it. It gives you consistent structure and efficiency. And you don't have to think twice, right? This is all, you know, very bottom of the page. And then you start to put together alongside of the guideline. So this is an invisible guideline. So I'm going to show you how to use this in PowerPoint and then Word, OK? Alignment. Summarization. Avoid more than text, one more than you know, text alignment. So center alignment is typically not encouraged. Try to avoid it if you can. However, if you want to use it, then you got to use it with intention that I'm going to do traditional layout. Like typically when you go to expensive restaurant, they have like center alignment. Or a wedding invitation, center alignment. However, they're not meant for heavy reading. Typically very short. And then each line is actually separate. When you look at the menu, OK, dinner, one menu, one menu. So it's not really difficult to follow. However, when you put the paragraph in the center, you just saw that uh, it's not efficient. Let's talk about contrast. Contrast is all about creating a starting point. When you look at things, sometimes like, uh, where do I start? And then go next. So you're using the contrast to make reader Pay attention to one thing to start on your information. Without that, mm, you may get like, oh, uh, 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 I'm done, right? <laughs> so another thing that showing you elements-wise, you can use a size, you can use a value, which is you can change the opacity, or you can change the value means that you can also consider the color, contrast, and then the shape difference. And we just talked about alignment. If things are not aligned, they get noticed. So do it intentionally. If you're not things aligned, then you mean by, OK, look at me, right? Not by mistake. Um, if I give you this, these are some of the variations that you can also think about. Even the type, there are many, many different components that you can use, you're not aware of. When you actually build a you know, visual output, you choose a typeface, right? Times or Arial, right? Have you ever thought using different weight? like a bold, semi-bold? What about the casing? Uppercase, lowercase? Think about the stop sign. Are they set in the lowercase or, or uppercase? They're yelling at you to stop. So that must be all uppercase. Because when you think about the stop, they create a very rigidity, rectangular shape. That means that I am commanding you to stop. So almost like a type is also creating a shape as well, right? So. I talked about the different typeface. I mean, this is another whole topic. So there is a big category of typeface, one serif and one sans serif, right? So when you look at these, are a little bit of like a fetish kind of little ornament in there. That's called serif. And example, times. Times in Roman, right? Sans serif, Arial or RIT, Helvetica, Nuea, Grotesque, right? So when you create a contrast between the two typeface, you go very opposite. Color, value, thickness. So they all come in place to create a contrast. And another thing that you can also consider, I mean, in here that this is actually I got in the mail. So it's talking about the <coughs> science lecture. So like, all right, do you want me to come? Uh, what are the lecture that you're presenting? So I try to actually really focusing on reading, however, uh, not really quite, I can actually start a little bit, but it's also a combination of the, you know, the white space that I cannot rest my eyes and separate the information because of they're all tight. So this is another principle that can be combined into like proximity. So what I actually, you know, put this information in here is a contrast. Again, that I ask my students to, okay, you have a week using the only type, using black and white, can you make this communication more effectively? Only type. So where start? Start from calling the reader's attention. 
thing is that you put all this presentation, you put all this handout and give it to them. If they don't start, even they don't look at it, your all hard work will be lost. So you gotta mod, you need to grab their attention. You gotta create more visual interest to hook them in, right? So try to combine different variation to hey, call your readers. In this one, I created for Sierra page the page one eighty event. This is a postcard. So this is a very small size, right? But when you compare to this to this, I definitely have an intention. You know what? You don't have to know this. But I want you to look at me first, because this is a flip side, right? You gotta actually look at the first. And then maybe you flip it, right? But your reader's attention must be gained using contrast. This one I uh, did the uh, class demo uh, using infographic. You know, some of you actually do day-to-day -day data visualization, right? So what I'm recommending is, is like using the contrast to plot your information so that if they have a like very, very you know, little time to look at your work, then make sure that you have your point across by using contrast, right? So in this case, you can see that I use uh, some of the shape to call out and also size and then color, right? So take away. When you go for contrast, you actually mean it. Don't go like, uh, I'm going to make it a little bigger. Then it creates a misunderstanding or like a visual clutter. So you got to go at it. If you're going to call their attention, then you got to yell at them, right? Look at me, right? Proximity. This is actually in conjunction with alignment and then white space. So we already know, because proximity is one of the Gestalt principle that things are together, we perceive as they're related. Things are apart, they are not related, right? So just that, remember that. So in here, just a simple name card. Well, I have a one, two, three, four, five things to look at. But however, I have a contrast though. I have a company, bang, bang, bang. But from here, oh my god, you have four other things to look at. Versus, I'm giving you one, two. Two grouping, simply as that. Look at company and rest of the group. One, two. Looks simple. I didn't remove any information. But using the proximity, I'm organizing my information. I'm creating you more efficiency of understanding the information. However, in this second grouping, is not the same. When you look at it, uppercase, bold weight, and then my position, regular. This is phone number and email. So there is some variation that you can consider inside of second graphic, a second grouping. We call visual hierarchy. I have a visual hierarchy in my second grouping, right? So, example. So I start with this, just a simple Word document with a lot of information. That's probably how you start, right? So if you actually go through, and there is actually two separate events, activity. One's keynote, one's some sort of more activity. So I asked Guiron to resign in class, which is like three hours. Oh, not even three hours, it was like an hour and a half. So take this and this. You can already see the proximity, right? Okay, this is a keynote, this is an event. And using the contrast, you can actually see, okay, there are the keynote. And also, alongside the, this is repetition as well. So if you see uppercase and bold, uppercase and bold, they're speakers. Maybe using your system, you can actually list more keynote speakers. If you set up the system, you can repeat it. Event, you can see the separation. Lowercase, but bold, you can see the list. Title, description, title, description, right? I'm talking about the proximity, but also talking about the repetition as well. So in here, different way to using proximity is that sometimes we don't have enough space to put things apart, right? So how you utilize the proximity is also visual cue. I put the line right there, right there. So visual cue to say, okay, I am different information. However, I'm not really giving you that much white space because I don't have to. This will cue you that I am different information. And proximity-wise, 
I separate the data information on the left side. This was my class demo. And then this is, you can see the alignment right there, grouping. So alignment, grouping, that kind of has all come together. So don't forget that using the proximity, you're creating a visual unit. And last grouping is actually much more efficient. Depends on your information, grouping. And when you actually have a you know, grouping, also inside of grouping, you can also have different level of information. I just show you using a name card, right? Repetition. So this is also, you know, kind of, you know, extension of what I just talked about using the proximity. So this one is from an article, Understanding Typography Hierarchy. When you look at these, these are the concert information. And when you look at these, proximity, right? Right? You have one, two, three. No doubt about it. I have something, three things to look at. But when you start to look at stuff, what are the first thing you do? We scan. We scan information. We don't just deep dive and read. 100% of people scan. See what you're offering me, right? When you're trying to scan, what do you scan? Uh, it's hard to scan, right? You scan first, and then you see something that you kind of interest or like, or like, then you get into it. So there is no clear contrast to start or variation to understand what information is what, right? So. You will need to start like a setting up the system first, and then you are going to repeatedly use so that people understand, OK, if you set the top header using bold and that size, then that's the band name. If you use green teal color using a different typeface in this case, but you don't need a different typeface, and that's date and time. Rest of them is just description. So you immediately understand the pattern. Once you actually understand the structure, you now, you don't have to learn again. That's the efficiency of it. So using the repetition, you're making the reader understand what your information structure is and help them to scan and then make a choice, make a decision. So it's all about, you know, help them to understand what you are trying to say, right? This is all like a mechanism that help them, you know, you're trying to communicate important thing, but if you don't actually make them stop or look at it, not, nah. and then once, but even though you have a contrast to let them start, but then they don't know where to go, or they cannot scan properly and make decision, that also kind of the, you know, loss, right? So we all need to consider these to help them understand your message and information. So this one I uh, did for demo in my class. This one is, again, only using black and white. And just type. And when you look at the information, there are a ton. However, it doesn't overwhelm you. My point here is actually you scan first. So what I did, I created a system using type. All right, so you have a key statement right there using that size and that weight. And I'm going to actually have same thing Again here, because I have a two big sections to talk about, right? So you automatically look at, okay, boom, boom. Actually, there are more cut off, but you, know, you can see the pattern. And oh, wait a minute. Within the big container, there's something different, but it's not the same as that guy. So it's a subsection. So you can actually use this. Okay, you may have subsection underneath this. Then you can use this pattern to structure your information, and then your reader will scan first, and then, okay, I understand what you actually structured using visual kind of system. I'm going to follow your information now. This one, I created just a quick demo in the class. Um, so what I did is, okay, I'm going to use a color to repeat. In this case, I'm not hitting on important information. Rather, I'm going to guide you to what to look at. So this is also a more efficient way to use a color. I didn't highlight this or this, this. I don't have to, because start from that, and that, and that, that, that. That's how we also think about the repetition. It doesn't have to be all type, 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 heavy information. You can just use any type of graphic element to create a repetition. Again, repetition. Thing is that sometimes this, that if you repeat everything same, 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 it's like, uh, you know, music, you know, white noise, the same, you go to sleep. So if you want somebody to go to sleep, then 
repeat everything, right? However, if you want people to kind of, OK, get the pattern, but then kind of nudge a little bit once in a while, then you got to add a variation, OK? Visual hierarchy. So everything here is come down to more related to the visual hierarchy. All these elements can support to have a visual hierarchy. Why do we need a visual hierarchy? I'm going to pause and get the answer, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> so, Some things are more important than others. Exactly. And who we are talking to? The people, human. And who we are as human, like we have right now, based on the research, you know how short the attention span is? A second. Goldfish, 10 seconds. So we are talking to people who are, oh, you don't grab me? Or you don't give me something to go next? Uh, I might go past. Right? And also, 60% of people are visual learners. So some people are learned by looking at things, or listening, or writing, or doing things. But 60% is visual learners, right? So we need to consider that majority of that, okay, how we can transfer our knowledge, right? Maybe incorporating more visuals in your information, right? In this example, I use a keynote and then I screenshot it so you can totally do it, your flyers or presentation and everything using the tool that you know. So I start with this, okay? So some of the you know, lecture, the design talk that we're having in art and design uh, college. So some information is actually I made it up. But then I'm going to show you, OK, we start all here, right? Word document. And I'm going to actually quickly show you how I get here using a principle that I just talked about. It's not that hard, OK? Just follow me, OK? First, we need to know information grouping. If you are owner of information, you know how to group them. And you know which information is more important than the other. So don't try to tell or transfer information as if everything is important. You know what happened then? Nothing is important. So you got to make a decision. You got to really, really think about, OK, if my reader, if my audience have 10 seconds, what should I tell them? Right? What is the most important thing they should take away? So that will give you some idea to, OK, OK, this one. I cannot back out of this. This must transmit it. And then what's second? And what's third? You're giving them by order so that they can remember certain things. And maybe they go next, next, next so that they can understand the information. Right? When you look at this, a jumble of text, like you were like, uh, trying to read but then lost focus, right? That's what we do. I'm going to start grouping. All right, so title and then, uh, you know, like, you know, speaker, and then date and time, location, and then description. So right now, nothing is actually, you know, happened. I just group the information. And I'm going to decide, okay, what, like a quick just order, okay, what's the order of this, hierarchy of this? Not touching anything, just thinking in the document, thinking in your note, right? OK, so design composition, RIT, maybe because holding the umbrella of this event, maybe that could be like upper or higher level. And then lecture title, and then speaker, and then date, location, description. And I'm thinking about, OK, I probably need to speak loud, out loudly about the lecture title and then who's speaking. And what's the important thing? Date and location, right? Description. Mm, if they have a time. So I just quickly put into my box and notice that I try to guide myself using alignment. So you can quickly draw, or okay, I can show you how to do it in uh, Microsoft Word and then PowerPoint. But so you can see that okay, I'm cre you know creating an invisible container so that I don't go off of the edge or I make self like okay, I'm gonna align things in here. And I'm going to nudge a little bit of proximity, right? I'm going to give some space to also incorporate into the information hierarchy. And then 
here, and here. What happened? Okay, I'm gonna really go at go at with the contrast, right? And then contrast so that title gets loud, loud. And then what I'm doing also here using a alignment and then variation of white space to give a visual interest. Again, white space is very important. So when you look at go here, so it's typically how you kind of set the document. Every day we look at that type of document in Word or PowerPoint, right? So we are kind of accustomed to that. Nothing is special, right? So if you're actually trying to make something unique poster or something special flyer, maybe you can use a different alignment so that it gives you various of different white space to utilize into. Thing is that I can just make this white and then black, I'm done. But color, I mean color is another topic. So when you look at the stop sign or the construction site, what do they use color? Yellow and black. Why is that? That gets highest contrast, that get noticed. So obviously I gotta actually you know, apply color using more intention while setting up the mood, but in this case, I just quickly, okay, what's the highest contrast that you see? Construction site, so yellow and black. So that's what it is, because I did it very quickly. And what you can also see is, uh, okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of the repetition here. So to get, have a little bit more visual rhythm to it. So white, white, white. So it's that top to bottom, so that I'm gonna make my reader to go down into the information or go up, right? And here is before and after, quickly using Keynote. And the thing is that it's not really hard. So what I'm trying to do here is that showing you principles, right? We need to understand what this principle is. The thing is that you just keep reminding yourself. And can you actually pinpoint what principle maybe need to include it here or missing it? And then you're trying to update your document, update your presentation, it is more like a step by step. It's not like you can do everything at once. I mean, this is more like a, you know, learn to drive the car, right? I'm showing you how the handle work. Here's a, you know, shift. Here's a pedal. Here's a blinker. Thing is that that's not all. You got to practice and you got to, you know, remember how to use things, right? So this is like more like I'm showing you some of the components of a car today, right? And then I'm going to show you, all right, how can we apply these principles? Like, hey, you talk really fast. Can you show some examples? But what's really helped me, right? What's going to really help me? So I'm going to show you using the tools that you already know. Using, again, these. So I'm going to point out things that you can simply remind yourself, OK, hasn't said this, I'm going to must do the alignment. Hasn't said this, I'm going to make it this apart. Maybe I'm going to use a contrast using different weight, size. But I'm going to actually step back a little bit. So this is not my real part of my talk, but this is quite important. When you're trying to design something, and we don't just start to go into software and move things around. That is like time wasted. So what you really need to understand, what you really need to f have it before you actually jump into software, or even doing sketch, is that, OK, who you're talking to? So same information, but you're talking to elementary school students. High school, but you're talking at the research symposium. Or you're talking to your parents. You need to adjust your information, right? Same as design. And what do you really know? want them to know, right? That's your message and your content. And important, what order? The hierarchy. So this is before you actually start designing. You gotta look at your information. You gotta look at your message and content. And that'll also help you to design better, okay? And how and where is going to be seen or used? This is very important as well. Environment and output. So you have the same information. And you are delivering your information using poster versus PowerPoint presentation or handout. It's all different environment. And your audience will 
react to differently. Their perception, their attitude is very different. When you think about design, let's think about the role of each different visual output. The poster is an example. Poster, the function is going to the wall, right? Or you typically nowadays put it in the email, right? What do they must do? Grab your attention, right? Poster, I'm having an event. That's the first starter. What type of event, right? Versus handout. You don't need to yell at them to look at me. You're already giving it to them. And they already have the paper to look at. So it's a different structure and different information flow that you got to consider. So you got to think about that output. Presentation, even the research poster you done in PowerPoint, if you're presenting versus actually you're printing out and then doing the exhibition. Doing exhibi exhibition, just the poster itself, or you're actually presenting in front of them. They're quite different. And then depends on that, your visual output, different, right? So not everything is made equal. So you gotta really define these. And this is another whole topic that we can get into like next, next, next time <laughs> once we actually get this first. But just giving you a takeaway, color and typeface, they carry the emotion. They carry the attribute. They have a personality. So when you choose color and type, you must understand they're very, very different entity. So for example, you know, uh, based on the research, same information, same text output set in Arial versus Times New Roman, they actually test, OK, how you know, readers are perceived that message. People think that Arial is funnier or lighter. Times New Roman, they think it's serious because it's how it actually shaped, how we actually used to look at. When you look at law form document, do you see in Arial? What about Declaration of Independence? Do you see in Arial? No. That's so wrong, right? I mean, why not, right? But we actually have that notion already. So you got to utilize that and incorporate into the communication. And thank you for sharing your visual output. And so I took a uh, little step at it. <laughs> so trying to show the, how you can quickly adapt these principles. So on the left side, Colin here, thank you. So you notice that this is yours. Uh, and actually, I was like, wow, you're already there, right? So I'm just going to give a little nudge to it, right? And then we all do presentation, right, in your you know, day to day uh, uh, task. So what I did is, OK, well, good, right? You have a visual component, nice docky here, right? And then picture, I mean, most of this information is done in visual. So what I'm trying to help you here is that, OK, this is a presentation. Let's think about the goal of this visual output. It's a presentation, right? So you go slide by slide, slide by slide. So what you need to consider is repetition first, the title. So you need to come up with some sort of a slide title. Not every slide should have a title, because if you have images, then you can go full, full up on it. But if you actually have a topic or section, you got to make sure that people understand the pattern, right? Same thing that I showed the infographic with the type variation to show big section and then subsection. Same thing. I have a title goes here. And then if, as if this is the same lecture, then I have, OK, it's a different subsection of my whole topic. Thing is that you don't actually need to repeat yourself, and then you just naturally talk, because this pattern is already there. and your audience will recognize. And thing is that we all trying to jam pack the information on the slide. The problem is that unless this is like a research poster, <coughs> right, that is going to be printed out, you're actually talking in front of this. So what happened is, again, the human cognitive good loading, that if you actually put a lot of text and then you're trying to speak in front of that, then what happened is that they don't know what to focus because they immediately look through your slide. So they don't listen to you. you don't, do you want that? Then why don't you just give a handout, right? So you got to make a decision. 
if this my present if this presentation is actually meant for supplemental text after your lecture, yeah, then you should tell them, okay, don't read this and listen to me. I'm gonna post into my course. You have you'll have it. But use it as a you know secondary textbook. You gotta actually set your audience with a proper expectation of what this visual output is meant for. Uh, in this case, what I did again is that okay, I attempt to just give you some structure of slide title here, and then I'm repeating. And thing is that in visual hierarchy wise, right? Sometimes when you create a presentation with big, big slide title, then you run out of space, right? That's all you know that can happen. So what I did is that enough of the prioritization, but not too big, so that you have a white space to put your actually your main content. And here, what happened is that this seems to me, sorry I didn't misunderstood your slide. However, what I get is actually more half-half equal hierarchy. So what I did, if it's an equal hierarchy, then you've got to give equal visual weight, equal space. So I divide into half-half. Okay? And then also, when you look at these, wear your seatbelt, wear your seatbelt. Oh, looks like you're kind of saying in a both way the similar thing. So I create a repetition here, here, as if this is kind of equal weight of the, in the, you know, your, uh, uh, what's it called? And what I did, change the font to uppercase, because this is yelling at you, right? And I use a different typeface with more condensed. You can, I mean, you can see that, right? I changed the different typeface. And by having uppercase and weight, I could actually manage to make it smaller than big size bubble, which is taking away from the imagery, right? So I create a try I trying to create within this imagery hierarchy. So I want people to look at this scene and then wear a spell. You and then wear a spell. So within this visual information, I trying to consider okay what is the visual hierarchy in this? What are the relationship of these two? Okay? And another thing on the upper here I, I am so, like, uh, I was like, oh, that dog is so cute. <laughs> but, okay, what's the more important information here? Probably the person and the information right there. So what I tried to attempt, sorry I actually ruined your image selection, but what I tried to do, convey here is that, okay, if you want us to look at this all this long passage of text, I need, you need to bring them. You need to actually breathe when you talk, right? Same thing as actually written text. So what I give is air to kind of, okay, there's a title, and I'm gonna follow the quotation, right? And what I did also, quotation, you actually have it here. I create a contrast using different typeface set in the Georgia. You already have the access to Georgia. And use little bigger size and then color. And what? You also notice that I'm using repetition. Orange, orange, orange. So that I'm guiding reader to the repetition of color. And by doing this, images right here, you can easily crop your image in PowerPoint and Word document. So that I kind of have a little bit more like a lighter mood of visual presentation, I'm looking at here, you actually have a repetition of bubble. So I take advantage of, okay, you actually have a notion of a little bit lighter presentation here, right? So repeat the pattern of what you have, right? And what I also did is, okay, this name, maybe that guy is this guy. So correct me if I'm wrong. So what I did is proximity. So person, name, we can recognize them right away. And then what he said. And also, if you must put the long passage of text, you must highlight keyword so that they don't really look through while you're talking. So key point, except humanitarian reasons, right? So you can actually point out with your strength of your voice. However, don't let them read while you're talking. So I'm going to show you how to do it if I have time. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mike here. Thank you, thank you, Mike. So this is from Mike example. So he sent me this, you know, flyer about uh, David Nelson, right? So when I look at this, okay, what could it be the visual hierarchy? What's the important information in here? So I look at it, okay, RIT and I, Amtrak, yeah, okay, that's probably important. However, what's the message about? Oh, almost like David Nelson, 
he's probably the primary information in this case. That's what I interpreted. So if I'm wrong, sorry, but uh, so based on that, I created this in Word document. So how I did in the, again, the information hierarchy and organization. So what I did, OK, David Nelson and photo together. And then partially, this information will go with him. However, by hierarchy, it's so one group, right? One big thing. Look at me. I'm David Nelson. Within the David Nelson, you don't need to know yet, but there's information if you are interested in. And I gave Amtrak and RIT give a little nudge because seems like your intention is that this is also important, like maybe, you know, the organization that you want to also kind of, you know, promote, right? So I actually give them two, like a little bit of the two together because they're all brand, like organization. So however, I use a proximity to separate from David Nelson and then put it right there. And you probably didn't notice that I also use a repetition of color. And I, you know, this is actually uh, uh, RIT orange color. And their brand guide on the website, they actually have a color code. And I'm going to show you if I have time to how to actually use the color. Uh, another thing in here. So I give a little more, you know, expressiveness to it. So, you know, this one's maybe very neutral, right? More like, OK, you can come. However, I made this into more like a little strength, I guess, that has like a, whoa, David Nelson, come, you know, work with me or join me, kind of the give a force to it. You know, so as you can see here, this is a very easy to do, the shape masking. And then also the Word document gives you color uh, application to it. So what I did, I connect the color, Amtrak blue, orange, RIT. So it repeats and also strengthens the brand and the message, right? And what I did, this is the same, right, Helvetica. However, I said to slanted. So in sans serif, it's called slanted when it's kind of like this. So think about the Nike straight up. Nike is always slanted because it's dynamic. You create a movement. So just simple as that, right? Another thing, what I want to show you is a type personality. So. Another thing also is that I grab these Im uh, images, and if your visual output is printing out and you don't have a good image quality, then you cannot scale up like this. So I'm just showing you because it's a screen. So you know, uh, big no-no if you don't actually have a good quality images. But I want to just show you exact same layout, different typeface. The same thing that this is more like a serif. So David Nelson is a little bit more classical guy. The presentation maybe is a little more traditional, right? Versus something about him is like David Nelson, right? More modern, right? And then more strengthened to it. So that typeface you know, choice is even come with the intention, right? All right. I have a bunch of two, right? So I have 10 minutes to show you the two. <laughs> All right, so I have some resources for further readings. We will email these also. All right. All right, ooh, all right, I gotta go. Ah, I'm gonna sit down, let me show you. Uh, so RIT, if you wanna download RIT logo, these are all RIT like logo download. And they even have a toolkit right here has PowerPoint template as well, and then photos. So take all the vintage of it, okay? And they also have a color information about that. So uh, please, uh, you know, consider that using the RIT brand if you are going to use it. All right. So this is, uh, you know, from audience that I just explained what I did. So what you see here is that I have nothing here, right? So I'm going to actually trying to open up view. I have a guide, right? Right now, by default, they don't show actually the guides. So I don't know if you can see it. The dotted line is actually I made it. So it doesn't come with it. Uh, so what I do, I'm using Mac, so if you're a PC user, the location may be different, but the functionality is the same. So what I quickly do, also recommend, is the contextual menu that you're trying to, you know, thing, uh, things that you need is using contextual menu. What it 
you know, what that means is that software is quite smart. So if you select some items, right here I'm selecting, and then right click, and then it gives you relative function you may be using. So they're kind of guessing at it and trying to feed you with it. So if you're, you know, you know, if you're not power user, you don't know where everything's at, then try to select the item and then click right click, right? All right, so if I just give you, for right now, what I'm gonna show you is, okay, I'm gonna right click and then I have guide right here. So when you do that, you can do add vertical guide or horizontal guide. So you start to set up your guide, so I'm gonna just add the guide, vertical guide, right? So you can actually move things around. So what I did is that I'm gonna just undo uh, so what I did is actually trying to set up, okay, edge of that, right? So I have a left side and top equal, right? Left and right, except, you know, the same width. And then top here and bottom. Okay, can you see it? All right, I'm gonna nudge up a little bit. So when you, uh, this is actually, I put it up as, um, put it down, that's why you cannot see it, but, um, and so same thing, so you can also put it up uh, in the master, you can set up the master grids, but I'm just gonna quickly show you uh, the, some of the you know, tool that I did. All right, one thing is this. So I took the image of these, right? And then if you select the image right here, and sometimes what happens is that if you select something and the menu doesn't really change, what you need to do double click, right? And then it gives you the format picture because it recognized, oh, you just clicked the full, you know, picture, right? So right here, the format picture, and then what I'm gonna go here is a crop. And then crop to shape. And then I have a basic shape right here, right there. So what this happened is that it recognized the overall proportion and gives you automatic adjustment. But I want perfect circle because that's what the pattern is, right? So this is not gonna help me, right? So what you can do here is, okay, I'm gonna make it little crop first. I'm gonna do crop, right? And when you crop it, you have like handle right here, right? So I'm gonna actually create an attempt to do more rectangular shape, okay? Almost, right? You can see also the shape here, the size, you can also adjust it. You say lock aspect ratio means if you change something, it's gonna relatively adjust the uh, overall thing. So I'm just gonna unlock it and then trying to make, okay, 2.05, 2.05. Oops, I'm just gonna do that one. Just gonna use this little more guided info, do that, two by two. All right, close enough for right now. So, and then I'm gonna do again, you can also move this, right? Move things around within the window. So I'm gonna put them in the more center, right? And then I'm gonna select these and then crop, crop to shape, and then center. There you go, right? And then what I did is, okay, I'm going to guide this, and then things that I mentioned that this is a little bit too big, right? So I'm gonna take this guy, name, I'm gonna delete it, right? I'm just gonna move things around and then I'm gonna paste this right right here. And uh, what I also use is instead of Calvary, uh, I use Open Sans. So what's Open Sans? It's a Google Fonts. So what you can also do is it's free. So if you're willing to explore some option with that, then you can go to Google Font. And then this is actually free to use. You can download it. So you can see I have like a little bit mention about serif and sans serif. There are other types of typefaces. Um, so let me just turn it off and then say, you know, if you're going for, um, you know, let's say sans serif without the feet and then, you know, without the serif and then straightforward or here's an option right here that open sans and come with a 10 style means when you look at these, uh, you have how many weights? Light to extra bold, right? So you can edit, and then if you go to there, and then you can download, right? Download, and then if you are using PC, it'll be, uh, you can actually do right click on it, but I'm just gonna do this, double click, and then it's gonna open it, right? 
So you, in the Mac, what I typically do is a double click or right click. Uh, I'm just going to double click. It goes into font book and then trying to install the font. And if you are a PC user, it's going to go right click and install. Okay, but I already have it, so I'm not going to install again. So that's how I got the typeface. And Open Sans have a little bit more curvature and then still has modern edge to it. So that's why I'm using that typeface. Um, and I'm going to actually add. And also another thing is that by default, everything, you know, every text you guys, uh, you know, typically we said is actually pure black. Thing is that when you actually have a white to 100% black, sometimes it gets too much contrast. So a little bit darker gray will give you a little bit of that easy on the eye on the screen and also create a little more sophistication to it. So I'm just going to make this type a little smaller. So also trick is that typically you can do if the page title is, let's say I set into 32, then if it's a body text, you can also do more you know, double sizing to create a hierarchy. So I set this to 32, so I set this body text to kind of 16. Um, so you, know, you can do more mathematical formula of creating a type hierarchy using that kind of sense of that uh, multiplication. Um, and here, I'm just going to change to open sans, and then I'm going to just go with regular. Right? And then I'm going to set it to 16. And what I'm going to also do is instead of a very, very dark color of that, I'm going to set to a little darker gray. So if I select this, and then I'm going to go into color here. And this is a Mac, so probably the color uh, picker will be different from yours. However, you can see the little uh, monochromatic value change. So this, the contrast can be also created by value, right? So I'm going to do a little darker gray right here, right? And also what happened here is that typically the text is by default is we call letting that space between the baseline, meaning right here there is a space between the line, right? If this is really tight, you feel, even though I said to gray, it feels still cramped, right? So what you need to do here, you kind of blow air between the line, right? How you do that? Select this, and then right here, line spacing. Do you see it? Oh, sorry, I've got to go down here, because this screen is scratched. Right here, line spacing. So what happens is that one, that's actually Depends on your previous setting, it may be different, but one means, okay, you have a 16, then spacing is 16. So sometimes what happens is that the, we call like a sender, descender, they can actually get hit. Oh, this is like different terminology, but the line can get very, very uh, touchy, right? So if you make this 1.5, oh, that's too much, right? So what you can also do is that go back here and then set to line spacing option. So this is more super user, right? And then what you can do here, right here, line spacing. And then you can do, because we know, we know what point size we're using. So 16, right? You can do exactly. And right now, when you do one to one, if you have a point size 19 and it give you 9.2, so I'm going to do this. Typically, uh, line spacing is recommended by 120% to 150% of your font size. So you can do the little bit of the math, right? So if it's a 19, then I can maybe go to like 21. Let's see how it works. Oh. All right, I'm going to actually do, because it's a point, so I'm going to do 21. OK. So you just see that, right? Have a little bit of, whew, right? Maybe this is an item, so I'm going to go all a little bit. So this is, you know, when you design, this is about like, see it? And change it. See it? Is it what you wanted? Change it, right? And then what I'm going to do here, sometimes uh, this is another terminology for typography, that if line's too wide, then what happens is that we call line length, your eyes travel left to right. And then it's hard to come back. So you got to also think about how far your lines go, 
right? And typical formula is that, you know, uh, you know, you do, okay, you know, typical like 45 to, you know, 75 kind of number of characters, including space for proper uh, body text line length. But you can, right now, you can use just the judgment of your eye because we are naturally wired to see things comfortable, right? And then put it right here. And then also another thing that I'm going to show you, this guy is not adjusted, right? So I'm going to adjust to the light gray. And I'm going to change to maybe like 14 because it's not, yeah. As for right at time, what is the single most impactful change that you've uh. made? Okay, grid, <laughs> the guide, and then also what is more important is that you gotta look at your information to group and then prioritize. And then try to apply that information hierarchy through your design. So you gotta cut your important things out because nothing can be important if everything is important. So you gotta really control yourself, okay, this is most important. Like literally, I put actually number to it so that I remind myself, okay, this is one and this is two. And so the demo that I was gonna show you is that you can easily access through lynda.com, right? They have a phenomenal resources like design, you know, tutorials, and then just basic principles that they probably do better than you know anybody else because you know they're you know meant for that educating people through, uh, you know, uh, multimedia. So take advantage of our IT resources. And if you're not, you know, kind of good at software, also Rinda.com have full of software resources. And another thing that I recommend also is that, okay, I don't have a time to go through Rinda.com of three hours of tutorial, right? So what you can do is quickly search, right? Even like, because it's, this is a Microsoft product, you can get tutorial. Use master level guide to align across the whole slide. Thing is that they have a video tutorial that'll help you. And then they also show you how to set up things, sure. right? So the thing is that it is all about like how much you're willing to adapt and change, right? We are all busy, right? Thing is that if you want to efficiently communicate your message, then you got to also think about the weight of the visual output. How much effort you're gonna dedicate to make your information more efficiently delivered? So, I mean, I'll recommend because the summer's near, so use your summer time to hone your skills that you know help you to do better at your job, right? So, that was my two cents, and thank you very much. Thank you.